Hello lovelies and welcome to Squeaky's Cauldron or welcome back if this is not your first time here. I'm your host Sarah Evergreen and thank you for coming to my weird witchy corner of the internet to hang out for a little while. I am so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking about the sweet sweet magic of using a honey jar spell. Before we get into that though, please like, comment, subscribe if you are enjoying these videos. Share them with your bestie, share them with your enemies, I, either way is fine with me. Also, if you are interested in working with me, I do have three coaching spots available at a reduced rate while I'm getting my coaching legs under me. If you're interested, go to www.squeakyscauldron.com forward slash coaching and I will of course include that link in the show notes. Now, on to the spell. So what is a honey jar spell and why would you use it? First off, it's very simple, very straightforward, extremely tactile, juicy way of getting things to kind of move in your favor. Something to sweeten someone's approach to you or a situation that you're dealing with. This is sympathetic magic that we're working with. Sympathetic. So, <laughs> This is sympathetic magic that we're working with, which means that something in the spell either resembles something that you're going for or is symbolically linked to that. A lot of the magic that we work with is sympathetic. So in this spell in particular, the sympathetic aspect of it is the honey. It's sweet. It's pretty to look at. And this is what we're going to be leaning on is getting into that sweet space with a, like a difficult situation or something that you're trying to accomplish. So the first time that I used the honey jar spell, I was living with roommates and we needed to renew the lease, but our landlord was kind of a jackhole and was jerking us around. We had the extra complication of one of my roommates being out of the country for an extended period of time. She wasn't going to be back for another month, but we needed to get this lease signed. So I did a little honey jar to make things move smoothly and within a week we had the lease on our table and we were signing it and everything was good to go. No rent hikes or anything like that even. So this stuff works, it does work, and it works in just a really gentle, kind of lovely way. A lot of people use honey jars for love spells, and so I wanna make a note about love spells and just some of my thoughts on them. Love spells are fine, love spells are great. However, a lot of the time, love spells will come with unintended consequences. And in most cases, these unintended consequences come when the love spells are directed at a specific person. Because this gets into the energy of trying to get another person to attach themselves to you in this very intimate way without their consent. And you could have a whole diatribe about like how that's fine and how that's not fine. That's not really what I'm going into here. I just want you to be aware that there can be backfires, so to speak, around this kind of spell. So approach with caution and with very wide open eyes. Always when you're doing a spell, take plenty of time to contemplate exactly why you want to do it, exactly what the outcome you want to get is, and how you could go about that possibly without doing any magic because the magic is there to support your actions in the real world. It is the energetic aspect that goes hand in hand with getting your feet on the ground and moving forward. So for me, the best kind of love spell is a self love spell. Really no unintended consequences when it comes to that. Doing a spell that will help me love myself more is always going to be beneficial. It's always going to lead in the right direction because we can all use more true self-love. And I think when you love yourself deeply and unapologetically and both implicitly and explicitly, then the love that you're looking for in others those companion pieces, the, the people that you're looking to draw in will come in much more naturally because you'll be vibrating at that yummy, like, I've got everything I need already. I don't need something from this other person, but it would be great to have someone to share all this juicy love with, you know? So think on that. And 
If you do decide to go into doing a love spell for a specific person, some things I would recommend. Think about why them specifically. Why are they the person that you are trying to draw in? Not just, oh, I love them. What about them do you love? Get really specific about this. Get really intentional about this. What do you love about them? And how do you see those aspects in yourself? Do you see those aspects in yourself? How can you bring more of those aspects that you see in them out of yourself and become more of like this juicy person that you're loving? And this process may actually lead you to understand that like it's not that person specifically that you're looking for. Anyway, I think the juiciest love is enthusiastically reciprocated love. So you probably won't get that if you do a love spell. You're going to get that if you're coming to a relationship from a place of wholeness, they're coming to a relationship from a place of wholeness, and you meet together in this place of uh, really wanting to be with one another. Okay, done with that. How else can you use a honey jar spell? Well, to diffuse conflict in an existing relationship. This is a great thing to do if you're having difficulties with one of your parents or a sibling or a friend or with a boss, just to like, like if you keep finding yourself fighting with this person, butting heads with this person, and you just need to smooth things out a bit. You just need to, again, sweeten the space between you. Honey jar, perfect. Another way to use it, the way that I mentioned, is to get some kind of contract or legal proceedings to lean in your favor. You could also use this when looking for a job to sweeten a potential employer's perspective of you. Essentially, whenever you are trying to get someone to think more favorably about the propositions that you're bringing to them. Now, keep in mind, if your intention is harmful, then again, unintended consequences will likely arise. So think long and hard about what it is you want and why it is you want it. I don't personally believe in the rule of three. That is this idea that all of the energy that we put out comes back to us threefold. So like if you put out negative energy, you're going to get cursed essentially. That's not in my belief system. Maybe it is in yours. That's fine. I don't care. But I do think that we have to be careful about the energy that we choose to surround ourselves with. And any kind of spell work is us bringing energy into our space. So how do you do a honey jar spell? You're going to need a few ingredients, not many. Again, this is a nice, simple spell that you can do on a cheerful afternoon like it is here in Dubai. You will need a small jar, something that seals, a uh, paper and pen to write something down, or a small object that represents the thing that you're going after, your, your goal or your intention. Uh, bonus if you, you know, work with sigil magic and you create a sigil specifically for what you're going after, um, which you can also use later on in the spell. I'll get to that. And three to nine birthday candles. So I prefer using birthday candles to pretty much any other candle. Um, for this kind of spell because you can sit with it until it burns down completely and you're not going to spend the entire night watching the candle. I have these candles that I bought in Bellingham. They're these beautiful beeswax candles, completely natural. I love how they smell. I love how they melt. You can use any kind of candles that you come across. Uh, note here, if you are burying the leavings of your candles, please use a natural candle. So something made with beeswax, for example, would be good. If you are using something that's synthetic, please don't bury it. Just throw it in the trash. Uh, we don't want to be putting more plastic into the earth. Um, so keep that in mind. For this spell, you can use either a candle of corresponding color, like green for money, or pink for love, or yellow for friendship, or you can just use a white or a neutral color. Um, so for me, again, these beeswax candles, they're yellow, 
So I approach them as being a neutral color, white, essentially. You'll also want to get any kind of corresponding stones or herbs, this kind of thing that you'll want to add in to the jar. Make sure you have just like little bits, like little chips of stone are gonna be best for this, but even a little bit bigger, just something that's gonna be small enough to be completely covered by the honey when it's in the jar. Once you've gathered all of your bits and bobs, Open your circle if that's in your practice, or at least find a nice, clean, quiet space where you'll be uninterrupted for a while. And spend some time getting into a receptive energetic space. So meditation is really good for this. Spend some time focusing on your breathing, allowing yourself to get relaxed, because the magic works when we allow ourselves to get into that alpha space where we're more in touch with the universal energy. Um, when we're in these other frames of mind, you know, our, our busy monkey minds can block that energy from being accessed by us. So relax, get into your body, get into your space. And when you're ready, take that piece of paper and write down what it is you're asking for or write down the sigil that you've created for this. Or alternatively, if you're using an object, while you're meditating, keep that object in your hands and send energy into it, really charging that object with what it is that you're trying to bring forth. Then you'll take this piece of paper or the object, put it in the jar, and put the other corresponding herbs and stones that you're gonna be using into the jar. From there, you'll grab your honey. Oh yeah, I didn't mention, you're gonna need honey for this, like a fair bit of honey. And natural honey is great, I just use store-bought, you know, it's up to you, um, depending on your finances and what you have access to. I think just be uh, conscientious of where you are and what you can manage, because that's the most important thing. I don't want you going broke trying to, you know, buy the specialist honey for this honey jar spell. I want you to be able to access the witchcraft and, and utilize it in your life without stretching yourself thin. If you can afford really natural, beautiful honey, definitely go for that. It just feels nice, you know? So then you're gonna cover everything in the jar with honey, filling it up. And as you're pouring the honey, envision that outcome. Again, just like covering everything and filling the jar with that energy of, of this positive outcome that you're looking for. Then close your jar, make sure the outside's clean. And if you are using a sigil, you can write that sigil on the jar lid, on the bottom of the jar, on the sides of the jar, that kind of thing. Or just keep the jar closed. And then you'll take one of your birthday candles, melt the bottom slightly so that it can stick to the top of the lid, and then light that candle. And you'll stay with that candle and meditate with that candle envisioning your outcome until the candle burns all the way down. And you'll do this at least three days in a row. Uh, while I don't believe in the, the rule of three, I do believe in the power of three. Three is a very sacred number. And utilizing that numerology in your spells uh, really just, I think, implants it into your subconscious and it sends that message really strongly to the universe that this is what you want, this is what you're going after, so that it can respond in kind. So at least three days, maybe nine days, whatever you have the capacity for. And again, every time you sit down, just as you're meditating with this candle burning down, really envision and embody the outcome that you're looking for. Once this is done, keep the altar on your jar until something in the situation shifts in the way that you are looking for or until the situation itself passes completely. To dispose of the leavings of this spell, you'll take your honey and either bury it or, my preference, discard it in running water. And you can let the stones and the herbs go as well. Um, releasing them into running water, I feel, takes that energy away, whereas burying it can like make it hold on a little bit. So it's up to you. And then you can take that jar and clean it and use it for other things. You can either use it for non-magical workings, just to like hold stuff in, 
or if you want to use it for another spell in the future, put it out in the sunshine and let that shit get blasted by the sun's rays. And that will clear out any like residual bits of energy that are clinging onto the, to the jar itself. So there you go, the honey jar spell. It's sweet, simple, fun, smells good, tastes good if you get a little bit on your fingers. Let me know if you use this spell, if you've used it in the past and what your results have been. Very curious to hear. I hope that this video helps. And if you enjoyed this video, again, please like, comment, subscribe, share it to the wide reaches of the universe. And if you want some moon magic and want to get into that a little bit, please subscribe to my newsletter, The Moon Pages. It comes out once every fortnight, every new and full moon, and it's got custom tarot spreads, mini rituals, and lots of other goodies about each different moon cycle. Tune in next week for videos on working with Mary Magdalene, her magic, her mystery, all of that good stuff that's baked into this woman who... Uh, was Jesus's best friend. <laughs> so you'll see those and a meditation with Mary Magdalene as well. And until next time, my lovelies, as always, use your voice. <laughs>